If you've got a really good piece of structure that you really believe there's fish there, what is one important thing to remember before you leave that area? Good morning guys and girls. What a great morning it is. August 30. August 30. Hey, right around the corner. September 1. Dove season. Most everywhere around the south. Dove season. That's right. 2 Chronicles 20, 15. 2 Chronicles 20, 15. The battle is not your battle. It is God's. Oh, we have a lot of battles as we go through life, don't we? The battle is not your battle. It is God's. That's right. One of the best ways to get a younger Hook a younger person, a youngster hooked on fishing is to hook the fish, hand the child the rod, and let him or her battle that fish in. <laughs> now, most kids will, run, will learn quickly that they're not actually catching the fish, but the important thing is that they are having fun. They are having fun. So, hook the fish, hand them a rod, let them wind it in. Now, if you're in an area where there's a lot of fish around, you can do that pretty easily. Uh, and I got, I mean, when, uh, when Lightning was just a little guy, four or five years old, I mean, the moment he saw Chris or I set the hook in the boat, he'd throw his rod down and grab our rod every time. He loved it. He loved to fight the fish. He didn't care if he didn't hook it. He just wanted to battle it, all the battle in. The battle was what he was wanting. We all have battles as we go through life. My former preacher, Dr. Andy Bowman, says, and listen to this, either you've just fought a battle, you're in a battle now, or one is just about to happen. Now that pretty much pegs the slip sinker right there. You are either just fought a battle, you're in one now, or one is just about to happen. That's right. And by the way, uh, my buddy Andy Bowman just went through a real serious battle himself with some heart problems. He's had a couple of battles in the last four or five years, a couple of real serious life-threatening battles. And, uh, and God fought and won both those battles for him, by the way. He's in really good shape right now. Here's the deal. We can fight or we can let God fight. That's right. We can fight or we can let God fight. The choice is ours, but it takes a pretty mature Christian to hand that battle over to God. You hear what I'm saying? Not just everybody can do that, especially us guys. Women have a little bit easier chance or, or a little bit easier opportunity of doing that than guys. It's easier for them to give that battle to God than it is a lot of guys. We're macho. We're tough. We're big boys. You know, we can fight our own battles. We don't need somebody fighting our battles for us. But it takes a pretty mature Christian when you have one of these big battles show up in your life to just hand it over to God and let God fight that battle. Save yourself some trouble. And give your next battle to God right away. When you have that battle come up in your life, give it to God right away. You know, it doesn't matter if that's a small battle, a major battle, a life-threatening battle, a battle that brings you to your knees in a heartbeat. Give that battle to God. Battles can come upon you in an instant. April 5, in a heartbeat, my beautiful wife, Chris's life totally changed. Totally changed my life also. And we got in the battle of our life. The battle of our life. And we've been in that battle for a lot of weeks right now. 20 weeks or so. And we could not fight that battle on our own. I gave that battle to God. I turned my truck around on the middle of an interstate. Went down through the middle of the interstate, headed back toward Oklahoma, and I started giving God the battle right then. Right then, instantly, I gave God that battle. And I've gone through a lot in the last 20 weeks or so. Chris has gone through much, much more. But we've let God fight that battle. I've let God fight that battle. Chris has let God fight that battle. And God's winning that battle. So no matter what type of battle you have, whether it's a little bitty one or it's a major life-threatening, financially threatening, family-threatening, whatever the battle might be that you're in, give it to God. Give it to God. Can I tell you, He hasn't lost one yet. He hasn't lost one yet. God is always victorious every single solitary time. What a God we serve. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. 
Many of y'all are in a battle right now. Uh, our country has just gone through uh, the longest battle, the longest war in the history of America, 20 years or so. And it, we're, I'm not sure we're totally out of it yet, obviously. But uh, it doesn't matter how big the battle is, how small the battle is. The first thing you should do as a mature Christian is give it to God. Watch Him fight for you. Is that amazing to think about? The God that hung the moon and the stars is willing to fight Jimmy Houston's battle. He's willing to fight Bill's battle and Linda's battle and Dee's battle and Val's battle and everybody's battle. And he doesn't lose. He doesn't lose. Here's our tip for today. This is really a good one. On a really good piece of structure, try several different casting angles. That's right, casting angles, how you're positioned around that structure. Pay close attention every time you cast a fish. If you're throwing to a piece of structure, a point, a log, a brush, a boat dock, whatever, you catch a fish, pay close attention to the angle that you caught that fish from where you're standing. If you're in the front of the boat or if you're on a bank, you're on a boat dock, you're on a pier, wherever you are, and duplicate that angle. Sometimes it is so, so very critical. I've probably told this story before because it's just a remarkable story. Down fishing down in Eufaula, Alabama, and, uh, and I'd, I'd fish for half a day, probably close to noon, I'd caught two fish, and I was by myself trying to do a television show for Jimmy Houston Outdoors, and, uh, and I, I got on a point and I caught one, a nice one. And, uh, and, and real quickly, I, I turned that fish loose, throw back in there, and I caught another one. As I did, I moved my boat around that point. I fished all the way around the point and never got another bite. And because I'd caught a couple of fish there, I circled back around that point. When I got at the exact same angle that I was before, I caught another fish. The third time I'd done that, it clicked. And I said, angles, angles, angles. And I started fishing and I caught, I don't remember, 25 or 30 fish. But if I moved and changed that angle a little bit to the left, that angle a little bit to the right of where I was throwing, I quit catching fish. That angle was so vitally important to catch them on a crankbait. That crankbait was the way it come through there. And here's the cool thing about that. The more I caught, the bigger they got. That's right, the big ones were biting last. The little ones, once they got them out of the way, the big fish, and the last fish I caught there weighed over seven pounds. So casting angles become very important. When you catch a fish, you need to think about what all's happening all around you and duplicate that because these fish pattern themselves and we need to pattern those patterns. Sometimes the pattern is the casting angle. Guys and girls, go out there and have you a great one today. And remember, I sure do love you.